New York just got rated as the number one worst city for dating, and Seattle got rated number one best city for dating. What's going on? Let's discuss. Yeah, let me tell you the truth. As somebody who's uh, lived in Seattle, lived in New York, I could break down the nuances for you on a level that very few people will be able to. Let's just run the clips. Well, um, they said the metrics include the population of single people, the likelihood of marriage, the annual divorce rate, the rate of individuals actively searching for a relationship, quality of life, and cost of living. So while they have the highest population of singles, it's also the worst to start dating by all metrics. By the way, the only thing they have is the population of singles. Everything else is worse. Ugh. Hey, I don't have nothing to do. Me neither. Why don't we hold hands and start a relationship and get to know each other? And New York's like, hey, how you doing? What's up? Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Listen, you gotta take these surveys with a grain of salt, but let's just try to take it serious as we can. Everybody in New York is taking it serious, or maybe it's just content, and maybe it's actually just a scam by the survey company. Andrew, top 10 worst cities for dating. Number 10, San Jose, Man Jose. Number nine, Phoenix. Eight, Houston. Seven, San Diego. Six, Fort Worth. Number five, San Antonio. I didn't even know people thought about San Antonio that much. Number four, Chicago. Three, Philly. Two, LA. Number one, boop, boop, boop. New York City was the worst city in the world, which is crazy because a lot of s surveys and decades prior said that New York City was the best city. Yeah, I mean, depending on your perspective, New York is definitely the best city for dating or even LA is in many different ways. But I guess it depends on the metrics that you're tracking, David. So, I mean, what's the best city? Seattle. Seattle, David, Seattle was ranked number one on this list, which usually Seattle is talked about as one of the worst cities for dating. All right, let me tell you my honest takeaway. I think that this survey company, I have a hard time even saying the name because I think they're doing this for free promo, Fetish Finder. They basically reversed and inverse the results from like prior decades to try to go viral. But I'll tell you this, Andrew, is this a good tactic? Because it's still got a lot of people talking and trying to analyze this as if it was true. Right, so what are the what are the what some of the metrics that they're tracking on here? Population of single people. So there's no way New York loses there. Likelihood of marriage, annual divorce rate, rate of individuals actively searching for a relationship, quality of life, and cost of living. So okay, I could cost see, of living, I could see New York ranking low but on Here's there. the crazy thing is, Seattle is actually very expensive as well, has a very high minimum wage, as oh, well. that's true. Seattle. If you're talking about Seattle, the city, not just surrounding cities, but si the Seattle proper is very I, expensive. I could see New York killing it on annual divorce rate, though. Uh, anyway. Actually, I got some stats that might combat that, David. All right, so let's just take a look at the quick internet reaction. Somebody said, which <laughs> multiverse is this from? Basically said, somebody said, yeah, if you're like a techie female, maybe this is true. Like, you uh, know what I mean? Basically saying that, obviously... um. New York is better for guys. Yeah, so I guess, David, if they polled only females, I could see these results being sort of true because I think women in New York, uh, there are technically more women in New York than men. So then maybe women could be like, oh, well, men kind of like use that to their advantage and they, they date a lot and then they don't lock down. Well, there's or, a lot of artsy girls that move here for fashion and for art right. and different things. And there's a lot of bro-ish guys in New York that love sports, finance, making money, hip hop, whatever. Yeah, and dating women. And then uh, like the Bay, San Francisco and Seattle are notorious for being bad dating markets for guys. Right, right, right. So maybe there's something there. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smile Out Sauce on Amazon right now. Also, sign up for this <laughs> link uh, for like an Asian male secret project that we got. Give me your email. Somebody said, the city is for fun, not love. Let's be honest. Somebody said, did you learn anything from sex in the city? And somebody said, think about it, dude. This is where the, I'm looking for a man in finance. Six, five, blue eyes came okay. from. So my thing is about New York City is that for dating, for meeting up and going on dates, New York is a great city for it because just so many people you take and, the train and people, yeah, close and by. it's easy to get around and it's cheap to get around and <clears throat> people aren't too far from each other. Now, I will say this: New York is is a place full of rich people and full of a lot of ballers too. So sometimes the ballers, the guys who are spending a lot of money or possibly a low key, the sugar daddies, sometimes they throw things off here because they throw off like the imbalance, but ultimately. 
for dating, and I'm not saying marriage, but dating, I think New York City is great for right. it. Right. Some people said Seattle being the best for dating. Have you seen Grey's Anatomy? All their relationships were messed up in there. And somebody said, maybe if you have a different identity, Seattle is better. Okay. So, David, I want to talk about some other stats, okay? Because I want to talk about divorce rates. Now, divorce rates and dating is different. Are we talking about dating and marriage and divorce, or are we just talking about dating? Because, no, the national... The national survey says that divorce rates by state, New York, actually doesn't rank that high. New well, York, here, what are the highest states? New York is relatively low for how many people there are. The highest divorce rate states are New Mexico, Tennessee, Delaware, Alabama, Idaho, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Kentucky, Wyoming, Arkansas. Obviously, a lot of red states, a lot of like rural states, a lot of suburban states right there. Highest, lowest divorce rates uh, or highest marriage rate is... Uh, Arkansas, Missouri, Texas, Washington, Utah, Nevada, Wyoming, South Carolina, Nebraska, Colorado. So some of those same states. So, that- so what Seattle's in Washington, maybe that they were referring to dating to marry. Maybe, maybe. And then also lowest marriage rate is Massachusetts, New York, Connecticut, Louisiana, West Virginia, Delaware, Maine, New Jersey, Hawaii, New Mexico. So what I'm trying to say is that New York kind of ranks uh, kind of has like a low marriage rate, but a low divorce rate. So those things make sense. Right. So right, people right. are just not getting Listen, married guys, in New York. Man, my opinion is that this was basically a fake juke stat survey to try to generate something for people to talk about on a slow weekend. And I'll tell you this, it worked. Let's get in the comment section here. Somebody said, what about Las Vegas? Is that good for dating? Because there, people are like, but yeah, nobody's even dating. They're just hooking up there. People said, have you guys ever looked at Utah or Ohio? That's horrible for dating. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you this. They, I think they purposely named big markets. Somebody said Miami. What, Miami's not horrible for dating? That's just like a party well, place. Well, David, if they ranked Ohio number one worst place for dating, then no one's going to even share the list because they're just going to be like, oh, that makes sense. Right. Point number two, Andrew. Somebody's saying, is Seattle being at number one a complete joke? You can go a whole day without having a single human interaction. There is the Seattle freeze is real. Mm. So the Seattle freeze was actually driven by the original Scandinavian... Uh, Settlers that settled Seattle and or Scandinavians are known for not being very gregarious or jovial. Mm. Um, a lot of people are saying, nope, Seattle is the place where you get a lot of seasonal depression, so everybody needs genuine cuddy, cuddle buddies. That's maybe why. Mm. People are cuddled up by the fireplace. That's just something you wouldn't do in New York City. And then, of course, somebody said, yeah, I bet Seattle vibes are like an early 2000s romantic movie. Right. Yes and no. I'll tell you this. I dated a... Uh, girl that was an Indian dentist in Seattle for a little bit when I was like living back in Seattle for a few months and she did want to curl up with hot chocolate by the fireplace and I remember that was just something that uh, first of all in New York there is no fireplaces and nobody would ever want to do that so there may be something to that number three uh they're saying it's not our fault New Yorkers are the best so we expect the best we always have the highest expectations and there's a trillion people here we always think the better thing is going to be right around the corner Mm. uh and agree or disagree that People in New York trade in the iPhone 15 Pro Max for the 16 Pro Max every year. Yeah, it, I mean, that is a, definitely an issue. I think there's the plethora of options. There's sometimes the the decision paralysis. There's this sometimes, sometimes it's better to have less options. Sometimes it is because you just make a decision. And uh, But in a city where everybody's like so cool and competitive and trying to meet the next best person. Everybody was the go-getter at their school, right? Yeah, I mean, dude, the caliber of person in New York is pretty high, I'm not going to lie. So it can get competitive. This guy said, a lot of these women will turn around and suddenly in their late 30s after partying in their 20s and 30s in New York will settle for anyone that's still available to have them. I've seen it plenty of times. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, guys. There's a very guy-centric comment, but you tell me, guys. And then last but not least, they're saying there's nothing wrong It's with any city. It's the entire country of America. Hookup culture ruined everything. Go outside the country. The dating scene isn't dead. America is a failed society. Oh, my gosh. American culture is just so trash compared to the 1990s. Hilarious. Um, here's my final takeaway. I just think this. I think Fetish Finder literally was trying to create more buzz for their app. And I think that that's why they released these results and they figured out, I don't even know. So you think, they didn't release their algo for how they arrived. There's no right. mathematic equation. Right. So you're just saying there's no merit to this. 
It doesn't make any sense. I mean, to me. it is true. We know a lot of married couples in Seattle, but that's not what this is about. Then they should say Seattle okay. is the best city for marriage. All right, I agree. I, 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 here, I, I just thought of the scenario. If you only have two years, no, no, no. Yeah, you only have one year to date. If you date for one year in Seattle, you're more likely to get married than if you date for one year in New York. Okay, yeah, I could agree with that. Because your optionality is so different. You guys are going to be doing marriage type stuff off the rip. Hiking, Pilates, cooking classes. Nobody in New York wants to do that. People are going to like crazy stuff like the box together, which I don't even want to talk no, about. No, you it's can like, go to a, like a sex show. You go to <laughs> like a bunch of clubs and raves and Brooklyn Mirage over a span of a year and just hang out with each other. And then, and then over the year, but like, I, I get what you're saying in Seattle, you're going to do more couple things, more romantic couple things in that year than you are in New York, New York. You could just hang out at each other's place like twice a month. And then that's dating for a year. Or and you just meet year. up at a, whatever new event is the 45 events are happening that random Monday. Right. right, right so right. ultimately I'll say this, man, I said this in life, all you are in control of on a hyper individualistic level is your own character that you're born into. Right. And you just try to make the upgrades, but then at some point you do have to place that character in a different game map and you just got to find the game map. That's going to help you accomplish your goals, your horizon. Don't worry about anybody else's horizon that they're trying to put onto you and juxtapose onto you. You have your character, you upgrade it, put yourself in the city. You feel like, but cities are different. Mm. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think of this Fetish Finder survey in the comment section below. I, I can't even say it. I believe I said this name so much that I completely fell into their trap. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.